welcome back, everyone, and the happiest of holidays to you. This is Jeff, and uh, as I mentioned before the commercial break, I'm going to be interviewing Debbie. Debbie, it is so nice to see you again. Hi, Jeff. It's great to be here. Folks, this is one fascinating lady, born in Santiago, Chile, Spanish as a first language. Ah, interesting. Gracias a Dios, yo hablo español también. <laughs> Jewish and uprooted, Germany, Israel. You know, you're an absolute chameleon of place. Debbie, please share with us how the diversity of your background has directly interplayed, if you will, with your mission to explore the intersection of the spiritual and the individual. As to me, this is absolutely a fascinating venture. Thanks. This is a really great question. There are many ways my background has influenced my desire to explore the spiritual and the individual. But if I had to pick just one, it would be that I grew up with an inherent sense of knowing that values come from different sources and that those values would inevitably color my sense of place. If this is true for me, I theorized it would be true for everyone, and from that point, what became interesting to me was the individual journey. Now, continuing with this theme of uh, resilience in your background, Debbie, I, I can assume safely that one of your stronger values actually resides in this flexibility. From day one of the sense of place class, the workbench, if you will, could you give us a couple of nuggets or, or captured moments that may have swayed you to modify your pursuit and destiny of where you want to go? Actually, Jeff tool from each of our modules and describe how it, it has helped me focus my research and my ideas. But I'll spare you the daily to choose a few. Studying Tuan and reading his book, Religion, From Place to Placelessness, was my most useful tool. I came into this class with the choice of looking at the internet as a place, fully expecting that Professor Yonkers would reject the idea. How can a gathering of transient electronic signals be a place? Tuan's description of place is pause, and more specifically, analysis that modern religion is rootless, that is, that it is rooted in the individual or the idea rather than a geographic place, gave me hope that I could demonstrate that an online faith community could exist. The second tool that I grabbed to shape my project comes from our readings and discussion on place and society of belonging. The world is both bigger than it used to be, after all, we can access sites, sounds, and literature from virtually anywhere in nanoseconds on our computers or even our phones, but it's also smaller of wonder at the vast differences that separate societies is quickly replaced with a blasé superficiality. In this milieu, establishing a community with like-minded individuals who do not share physical proximity is logical and almost a necessity. Such a community can exist at your local coffee shop or on the Facebook page. The last tool I'll share with you here is, believe it or not, food. So much of Jewish religion is centered around eating and food. There's a saying that all Jewish holidays are basically the same. Someone tried to destroy us, they failed, let's eat! In this vein, I'll admit you can't share food on the internet, but you can share recipes and rituals and family traditions. Everything from whether potato pancakes and latkes should be eaten with applesauce or sour cream, to recipes for matzo ball soup, they're all available online. These are more than just online cookbooks. They are windows into a rich tradition. Debbie, this has been wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Folks, thanks again for coming on board for this edition of Graced with Place. We'll see you next time. Hurrah!